Hi everyone, this is Isaac Orig, your prof in biochemistry lecture. And today we will be tackling amino acids, peptides, and proteins. So this is actually um, an introduction for you um, on what is the structure or the functions, um, uh, what do you have to remember about amino acids and proteins because this will help you in your professional subjects so in clinical chemistry in uh, immunology and other subjects in your third year and also uh, this will help you when you go to med school so my uh, my source for this lecture is Campbell but uh, when you read Campbell so it will be very uh, thorough, very in-depth ang kanyang uh, lecture about amino acids and proteins. So, uh, I have made the lecture um, easier for you and also uh, I have incorporated what I think are very important to us medical technologists because when you read Campbell, when you read your other books, grabe niya ka in-depth na more on uh, biochemistry jud siya na uh, some of the concepts we do not need to know na or if you want to read them you can read them in the book pero I have included what I think that uh, what uh, concepts I think you should know as a second year med tech student so uh, I advise you to take notes or to listen to this lecture video because as you can see or as you have seen in Quipper, most of my slides are only photos. So I want you to listen because uh, sa previous ko na mga quizzes, aking clinical chemistry na classes, uh, what I ask during their uh, quizzes are those um, concepts that I have mentioned during my lecture. Tapos I have, uh, I have um, uh, napansin ko na pag mag-ask ka na ng questions sa mga students about those na wala sa PowerPoint. So, hindi na sila maka-answer. So, I hope that you would change your habits na mag-rely lang sa PowerPoint or mag-rely lang sa PDF and listen to the lecture because this will help you. So, what I actually prepared for you is very basic. So, I hope that you would understand what we will learn today and also you can apply it in the future and also you can answer my exams so uh, when I make exams kasi I do it uh, uh, I make questions na analysis type so I do not uh, usually ask questions I ask questions na what is ganito what is ganyan pero I want to um, improve the testmanship of the students by asking questions na analysis yung hindi siya parang give away questions ba I want you to think when you are having your quizzes, you, you have your exams. Pero I do not ask questions na I did not teach you. So, uh, I hope that you would really uh, listen to this lecture so that you can answer your quizzes and your exams. Okay, so before you start uh, viewing this lecture, I, uh, I suggest you take a break or you rest muna for ilang minutes so that you can give your 100%, 200% focus when you view this lecture. Okay? So, uh, let's start. So, we are going to tackle about amino acids, peptides, and proteins. So, this is an introduction on uh, these basic concepts. So, as we all know, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So, you already know that since high school pa, amino acids are, are the building blocks of proteins. So, where can you find proteins? So, actually, proteins can be found everywhere. So, in our body, mga proteins natin, hemoglobin, collagen, in our skin, hemoglobin in our blood, um, enzymes, diba? You will learn more about enzymes in your clinical chemistry. And then, other pa na mga uh, other organisms, they also have proteins. So, actually, proteins are very important in the structure, the function of every organism. So, we will not uh, deal more with what are the proteins, ganyan. So, you will learn more about that in the uh, lecture about 
uh, metabolism of proteins and also in your clinical chemistry so you will have yung mga protein function eh, mga protein test ganyan uh, albumin um, protein in the urine mga ganyan so you will have that when you go to third year so amino acids are the building blocks of proteins di ba so when you think about it so proteins are made up of a series of amino acids so always uh, remember na proteins are made up of amino acids okay so we will deal more about the structure and the functions of some of the proteins and the amino acids okay so let's start with the structure of amino acids so amino acids are the building blocks of proteins so we will deal about their structure so that when we deal more about the proteins so we know what the proteins are made of so, amino acids. So, actually, from the word amino acid, you can already tell what the structure of an amino acid is. Okay? So, this is the structure of the amino acid. So, among all of the possible amino acids, only 20 are found in protein. So, later we will um, tackle or we will uh, enumerate what are those 20 amino acids that can be found in the proteins. So, ba yung mga 20 amino acids na yun, yun lang din sila ang nag repeat repeat until they make a protein. So, ano lang talaga siya? Uh, imagine, parang hollow blocks siya sa isang house na, ano lang sila, uh, nag stack up lang sila. Each individual amino acid is one hollow block. Then, when they stack up, they make the house. So, yung house yung protein. Okay? So, uh, this is the structure of the amino acid. So, look at the photo on your right. So, there are actually, uh, I want you to memorize four parts of the amino acids. So, the, the C in red is actually the alpha carbon. Okay? Siya yung alpha carbon. So, the, the group doon sa right ng C is the carboxyl group. So, yung COOH or minsan COO. Yun ang tinatawag natin na carboxyl group. I think you already uh, you already uh, tackled what the functional groups de ba sa inyong introduction to biochemistry. So uh, the amino acid is composed of the alpha carbon, yung C jan sa gitna, and then the carboxyl group yun jan to the right C double bond O then OH, and then on the other side of the alpha carbon there is the amino group or yung NH two, okay? So, ang amino group is NH2. So, excuse me. So, uh, I you already uh, memorized or you already met three of the groups in amino in the amino acid. So, first, again, the C in the middle is the alpha carbon. Okay? Alpha carbon. And then, yung COOH na naka-attach sa alpha carbon, that is the carboxyl group. Okay? Carboxyl group. And then the NH2 that is attached to the alpha carbon is the amino group. Okay? Amino group. And then, sa alpha carbon natin, there are two more. So, apat yung naka-attach sa ating alpha carbon. So, the first one is carboxyl group. The second one is the amino group. And then, the third one is, look at the top portion, it's a hydrogen atom. Okay? So, carboxyl group, amino group, and then carboxyl uh, and then hydrogen atom okay carboxyl amino hydrogen and then uh, the last uh, the last um, group that is attached to the alpha carbon is the variant or the side chain group which is um, designated by the letter r so ito siya ito yung variant group ito yung naga define what is the individual amino acid kasi yung carboxyl group Amino group, yung hydrogen, will all be the same. Lahat ng amino acids, they will all have those carboxyl, hydrogen, and amino group. Pero, yung variant group, they will have different uh, chains or they will have different atoms, molecules, dyan sa ating variant group so that we can define kung ano yung name or ano yung amino acid na yun. Parang ano siya ba? Uh, yan yung something unique to them. Yung kanilang side chain group or R group. Okay? So, uh, diba, as bakit sila tinatawag na amino acids, diba? So, diba, pag amino, amino comes from the word 
uh, comes from the amino group. Yung amino no word comes from the amino group, 'di ba? It has an amino group attached to the alpha carbon. Tapos yung acid is 'di ba carboxyl when you have a functional group na carboxyl, para siyang carboxylic acid, 'di ba? So carboxylic acid, acid. So amino group plus carboxylic acid, so amino acid. Kaya siya tinatawag na amino acid. Okay? So again, uh, the C in uh, in red or the C that is attached to all of the groups is the carbon that is attached to all of the groups is the alpha carbon. Then there are four uh, groups attached. So attached. So first is the carboxyl group, and then the amino group, and then the hydrogen and the variant group. Okay. So wait lang talaga guys. Okay. So, pardon my cat lang. Okay? So, again, what is the group that defines the individuality or the identity of the amino acid? It is the side chain group. Okay? Next. So, let's talk about the word chiral. So, what what does chiral mean? So, chirality, guys, is um, the... the Uh, ano siya, uh, it is a property of um, I amin mean, uh, it is a property a property of the amino acids na ano sila a mirror images sila so look at your uh, look at both of your hands diba they are mirror images of each other they are mirror images of each other tapos pero when you superimpose them both pag iganyan niya sila i superimpose mo sila hindi sila ma superimpose diba hindi sila ma-superimpose kasi meron tayong right hand and meron tayong left hand. So, they are mirror images of each other pero they cannot be superimposed pag, i, pag itapal mo sila dalawa. So, hindi sila magkapareha. So, uh, yun yung sinasabi natin chiral molecules because uh, amino acids are chiral molecules. Okay? So, pwede mo sila, mirror images sila of each other the, pero hindi sila ma-superimposed. Okay? So, remember nyo yan ha. Amino acids are chiral molecules. So, look at the picture on the right. So, diba? Ito siya. An example of an, a chiral, uh, parang ano siya, uh, analogy of what is chirality, yung hands natin. So, the left hand and the right hand, mirror images sila, pero they cannot be superimposed. Pero when you look at a flask, so they are also mirror images, pero they can be superimposed. So, Itong hand, they are chiral molecules. Pero itong flask, they are achiral or achiral molecules. Okay? So, remember again na amino acids are chiral or achiral? They are chiral. Okay? So, chiral sila ha. But later, there is one amino acid that is achiral. Only one amino acid is achiral. Okay? So, uh, remember ha, chiral, chirality. Okay. So, why do we uh why do we need to study na chiral ang ang amino acids? So, why bakit man uh, anong kwenta niya? Bakit pala kung chiral siya, 'di ba? Because there are actually stereoisomers of amino acids. So, ma-remember niyo yang uh, when you are have you encountered yung mga L-tryptophan, D uh D Alanin, L, alanin, di ba? Meron siyang D and L. So, those are actually stereoisomers of the amino acids. So, for example, sa glucose lang ito siya, it is not an amino acid. So, for example, glucose, di ba? May D glucose, may L glucose, di ba? May ganyan siya. So, those are actually stereoisomers because, di ba, chiral molecules sila. So, meron silang right, meron silang left, Okay. So, same sa amino acids. So, for example, one amino acid is uh, tryptophan. For example, tryptophan. So, tryptophan has D-tryptophan and L-tryptophan. So, how can you, uh, how can you um, tell if it's D or L? Okay? So, if it is D or L. So, again guys ha, Uh, you you call those stereoisomers, okay? So, di ba? As you can see, dito sa ano, dito sa picture natin. Uh, this is an amino acid, di ba? This is an amino acid. This is actually the same amino acid. So, it has the alpha carbon, yung C na black, and then attached hydrogen, 
and then attached yung uh, uh, violet is amino group and then yung red is carboxyl or carboxylic acid group okay and then yung r is the side chain so as you can see mirror images sila of each other pero when you overlap both of them or when you superimpose both of them they cannot be superimposed kasi yung r doon siya sa h then yung yung di ba yung r doon siya sa h so hindi sila actually uh, exactly the same okay chiral lang sila but they are not the same okay so next so with what determines the designation so how can you say that it is an l amino acid or a d amino acid so actually I included this para when you read yung mga D, ganyan, L, ganyan. So at least alam nyo why it is named as such. Okay? So it is actually determined by the amino group. Okay? The amino group. So ano ga yung amino group? It is the NH2 or NH3 na part, di ba? So siya yung may nitrogen. So the amino group actually determines the designation of the amino acid. So, look at the L-amino acid. So, where can you find the uh, amino group? Left or right? So, it is on the left of the alpha carbon. Okay? So, that's why it is called L-amino acid. So, yung D naman doon sa kabila, it is called D-amino acid kasi the, uh, the amino group is found on the right. Okay? So, again... What determines the designation? It is the amino group. So, when you look at structure, so, for example, I will give you a structure, 2D structure, for example, parang ganito siya. And then, uh, I will ask you, what um, designation, uh, what what amino acid is this? Then, same lang ang choices ko. Uh, for example, tryptophan. Tryptophan yun siya na amino acid. Then, same lang choices ko. L-tryptophan and D-tryptophan. So, you can determine it by looking at what functional group it is the amino group okay so what form of amino acids are found in proteins so actually so guess nyo what uh, form of amino acids are found in proteins is it the l amino acid or the d amino acid so it is actually the l amino acid okay so imagine uh, isipin nyo na lang l lahat so uh, L amino acid can be found in the proteins, lahat ng proteins. Okay? So, actually, uh, almost all, kaya nga, when you hear, uh, when you read mga amino acids, usually L talaga sila. Uh, L tryptophan, L alanine, usually L ang kanilang designation sa proteins. Okay? Yun ang yun ang most uh, yun ang form ng ng amino acids that are found mostly in proteins so yung d amino acids they are actually found in nature okay kaya nga may d amino acids pero they are uh, mostly found sa mga bacterial cell wall sa uh, uh, sa mga antibiotics pero they are not found in uh, proteins okay so again what are found in proteins l amino acids so let's now go to uh, individual amino acids so dito sa individual amino acids so we will look at there what uh, what chain man ang ating tingnan para to see if what is the individual amino acid diba the side chain or the r group okay so dito we will be classifying the individual amino acids. Pero I will not actually um, require, require you to uh, memorize the structures of the amino acids kasi it is not, uh, it is not um, practical na to memorize all of them. Pero if you want to memorize all of them, if you want to be a biochemistry major, you can do it. Pero uh, I advise na uh you we will uh, you will not memorize the structures talaga ng amino acids pero we will memorize kung what amino acids are acidic what amino acids are basic what amino acids are polar so later we will tackle them okay one by one okay so let's go to the individual amino acids so 
uh, the amino acids, di, di ba, there are 20 amino acids that can be found in protein. So, let's focus on those 20 amino acids. So, uh, we will classify these amino acids by their side chain. Okay? By their side chain. Kasi, di ba, the side chain is their parang unique, uh, what is unique to them or their individuality. Kaya sila, my names, ang ating amino acids. Okay? So, uh, let's go to the classification. So, there are actually two main criteria of the classification of amino acids. So, first is the polarity. So, polarity, di ba, yan yung non-polar and polar. So, yung polar, uh, I think you have already uh, discussed this in your chem uh, previous chemistry classes. So, di ba, yung polar, yun yung water-loving. Okay? Yun yung water-loving, hydrophilic. Okay? Polar, water-loving, hydrophilic. So, imagine nyo na lang, polar bear loves water. Okay? Then, yung non-polar, yun yung water, um, parang water-hating, or hindi siya water-hating ang term niya, parang water-repelling, hydrophobic. Okay? So, water-loving, polar, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, water-fearing, water-repelling, is uh, non-polar, okay? So, remember that. And then, if there is a presence of an acidic or basic group, okay? So, alam nyo na yan, what is acidic and basic? Kasi, di ba, sa inyong previous lecture, water and pH. So, you already know that. So, what is your, uh, what are, what is the other useful criteria? So, the presence of functional groups other than acidic or basic ones in the side chain and the nature of the groups. So, sige lang. Basta, uh, let's uh, focus on their polarity and if there is an acidic or basic group. Okay? So, again, what is polar, water, loving, hydrophilic, then non-polar, water, fearing, water repelling, hydrophobic. Okay? So, this is actually the most basic or the most simple, simplest, amino acid glycine so again what is the c na green it is the alpha carbon then nh2 is amino group and then cooh is carboxyl group okay and then one hydrogen attached so bakit dalawa ang hydrogen ng glycine so its side chain is actually hydrogen okay kaya siya ang pinaka uh, pinaka uh, simple na amino acid kasi uh, kasi ang kanyang side chain or R chain is hydrogen so same sila, dalawa ang kanilang hydrogen so ba as I have said earlier may isang achiral na amino acid and it is actually glycine kasi when you superimpose hydrogen and hydrogen, same lang sila, hydrogen so they can actually be superimposed with each other so, wala tayong D-glycine, wala tayong L-glycine. Kasi, uh, glycine is a chiral. Okay? So, I hope you get it, ba? Imagine nyo, hydrogen ang both sides. Hydrogen ang both sides. Then, pag iganyan mo siya, hydrogen din sila ang masuperimpose sa each other. So, glycine is actually a chiral. So, siya lang yung a chiral na uh, amino acid. Okay? So, siya lang yung achiral na amino acid ha? and the other amino acids are chiral and they have what we call the stereoisomers, yung D and L configuration. Okay? So, bantay may maka, ano pa ha, may, maka, kalim, may makalimot pa ng glycine. So, siya ang pinaka simple. Okay? So, hindi pa bibo ang glycine. So, next. So, ito yung sinasabi ko na uh, classifications of amino acids. So, I expect you to memorize what amino acids are under which classification. Kasi, basic lang naman yan siya, guys. So, you can have your own mnemonic. So, pero, uh, sige lang, I'll think about what I will ask sa quizzes nyo. Pero, I expect you to memorize kung sino ang non-polar, sino ang acidic, sino ang basic, so that you will know, kahit hindi nyo alam yung structure nila, alam mo yung kanilang uh, 
property. Okay? Properties nila ng amino acid. So, ito siya. This figure shows the side chain. So, yung, yung blue na square, yan na yun siya yung mga uh, other parts ng protein. Yung alpha carbon, yung amino group, yung carboxyl group. So, yung mga naka-attach dyan na mga uh, naka-attach dyan na mga uh, molecules, yung mga CH3, ganyan. So, yan yung kanilang R-chain or side chain. Okay? So, these are the non-polar hydrophobic. ba diba? Hydrophobic ang non-polar uh, groups. Okay? So, uh, uh, amino acids. So, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, proline, methionine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. So, actually guys, when you see their structures, you can see something na very similar sa kanila. So, what can you say about their side chains? So, they are actually, ano lang yan sila, uh, chains of CH3 lang yan sila. Diba? Makita mo, aliphatic, that's what you call aliphatic chain. So, aliphatic is A-L-I-P-H-A-T-I-C. Aliphatic. Okay, aliphatic chains. So, what do you mean by aliphatic chains? So, paulit-ulit lang yan sila. Si H3, si H3, si H2, si H3. Ganyan lang yan sila lahat. Kaya sila hydrophobic. Kasi, ba diba, yung mga ganyan, yung mga methane, ano, mga hydrophobic, ba diba sila? Pag may mga chains sila ng mga CH3. So, kapag may makita ka ng, na na amino acid or structure na may mga chains of CH3, aliphatic chains. So, you can, uh, parang maano mo na, ma-think mo na na non-polar or hydrophobic siya. Okay? So, for example, di ba yung isoleucine, CH, CH2, CH3, then CH3. So, when you see ganyan na configuration or ganyan na structure, so, at least may hint ka na na hydrophobic siya. Okay? Uh, di ba, alanin, CH3, Valine, CH, CH3, ganyan lang siya. So, paulit-ulit lang talaga yan sila. And then, makita mo din yung phenylalanine and tryptophan, they both have the, yung parang benzene ring, ba? Diba? Benzene ring. So, benzene ring actually is also non-polar and hydrophobic. So, ano yung clues nyo sa non-polar or hydrophobic? Aliphatic chains of CH3 and then aromatic compounds or those with benzene rings. Okay? So, yan yung sinasabi natin na aromatic. Okay? So, again, aliphatic and aromatic amino acids, they are non-polar or hydrophobic. Okay? So, when I ask you, uh, there uh, an aliphatic side chain attached to the amino acid structure is considered non-polar, polar, basic, acidic. Okay, so you answer that. Okay? So, again, memorize nyo ha kung sino yung mga non-polar. So, maka I will ask you which of the following amino acids are non-polar? Which of the following amino acids are polar? So, I I suggest you open your Campbell na book and then look at the figures doon. Kasi, ano na yun siya? Uh, enumerated na doon kung ano ang polar and non-polar. Okay? So, next is, ito ang polar groups. Okay? Polar amino acids. Okay? Pero, ano, disregard nyo lang yung proline. Okay? Hindi kasama yung proline dyan. So, yung, yung polar amino acids, sila yung may other group aside from CH3. So, tingnan nyo. Serine. So, what can you see sa side chain ng serine? So, yung side chain, yun yung ano ha, yun yung nasa red na box. So, diba, pag makita nyo kasi yung mga wala sa red na box, so, uh, alpha carbon, then hydrogen, then COO, carboxyl group, and then NH3 plus is the amino group. So, look at the uh, side chains or look at the uh, R group, R groups, okay? So, serine, ano ang mapansin nyo sa serine? It has an OH group or an alcohol group, ba? Diba? So, alcohols are actually polar, okay? So, when you see something na na yung end nila, yung dulo ng kanilang side chain is not CH3, okay? So, hindi CH3 yung kanilang uh, end ng kanilang side chain. So, for example, serine, ang end niya, OH, threonine, may OH din siya, ba? 
cysteine, may SH siya or thiol, di ba? Yan yung tinatawag natin na thiol. And then, asparagin, meron siyang amide group. Ito, CONH2, glutamine. So, they are actually polar groups, okay? They are polar groups. Basta, ang inyong ano dito, giveaway ninyo dito is ang kanilang uh, functional groups other than CH3. Okay? So, again, memorize ha, which are polar, nonpolar. Okay, next is acidic groups or acidic amino acids. Okay? So, for aspartate and glutamate. So, sila lang naman dalawa yung acidic na amino acids. So, as you can see, ang end nila is parang carboxylic group, di ba? COO. COO. So, when you put actually a hydrogen there, so, pag COOH na siya, yung aspartate, mag magiging aspart uh, aspartic acid na siya. Okay? Aspartic acid. And when you put an H sa glutamate, so, COOH na siya, ang kanyang functional group, it actually becomes glutamic acid. So, Memorize nyo lang, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, so they are acidic groups. So, alam nga naman, aspartic acid, basic group. So, acidic group siya, okay? So, I advise you memorize the both of them because easier to memorize, okay? The next, basic group. So, which of the, uh, which of the amino acids have basic groups? So, di ba, mapansin nyo, uh, may mga NH3 sila sa last or meron silang mga marami silang nitrogen so sila ang may basic amino acid structure okay so lysine arginine and histidine okay then uh, lysine arginine and histidine histidine okay so memorize nyo lang so I advise na ganito ang pag-memorize ninyo so di ba apat yung groups so, ang may pinakamarami na, uh, ang may pinakamaraming i-memorize is ang non-polar, di ba? Sila yung may pinakamarami, non-polar, hydrophobic. So, ang gawin nyo, memorize nyo yung polar, acidic, and basic. So, memorize nyo, which are basic, which are acidic, which are polar. Para kung wala doon, sa gi-memorize nyo, edi, doon siya sa non-polar. Okay? So, Actually, when you memorize, so, medtech entails a lot of memorization, I know, because I have been there, and I, I for one, uh, I do not like memorization, pero pumasok tayo dito at paninindigan natin ito. So, we have to memorize. We can, uh, we have also, uh, we also have to analyze, we also have to um, dissect questions, pero... Sometimes we also have to memorize kasi there are some questions of what is ganyan what is ganyan na hindi mo naman ma-analyze diba paano mo ma-analyze kung which of the following is non-polar tapos mga names lang ang ibigay so diba you have to memorize so alam nga naman leucine ah leucine is non-polar ganyan so hindi mo talaga siya alam kailangan mo talaga i-memorize so i advise na you memorize the three parts na have smaller uh, smaller uh, things to memorize and then kung wala siya doon eh di doon siya sa nonpolar diba so ganyan din ako so hindi ko din kaya i-memorize yan sila one by one pero when you do your mnemonics when you have your uh, the way you study na ganito ang gusto ko uh, kahit medyo tamad siya na style pero it works for me so you go with what works for you Okay? So, pero hindi ko kayo ginapilit na ganun kayo mag-memorize ha? Because malay nyo, stellar kayo then mag-memorize talaga kayo ng everything. Pero, if it works for you, then, di ba, better yun siya na na-memorize yung lahat. Pero, uh, sa mga students na uh, hindi masyado adept or hindi masyado expert sa pag-memorize, so, you should start uh, having your habits or developing your habits on how to memorize your uh, lessons, okay? Kasi when you go to med, when you go to third year, mas marami pa kayong i-memorize. So, hindi lang siya ganito kakonti. So, you have a lot to memorize. So, uh, develop nyo na ang inyong study habits, okay? 
and then don't rely on the PDF, don't rely on the trans, don't rely on the PowerPoint. Always study by yourself. Ay, hindi din siya by yourself. Always study with the video lecture as your guide and then study ka further. Okay? Lalo na sa ibang profs, baka mag-ask sila directly from the book. Okay? Sige. Next. So, these are the uh, designations of the amino acids. So, ito yung 20 na amino acids. So, they have the three letters na designation and also yung one letter nila na shortcut. So, ito yung mga shortcut na ginagamit sa books natin. So, I want you to familiarize, if possible, memorize this. Okay? Kasi, para when you read books... Uh, na may na magtackle ng amino acids and proteins at least alam nyo kung ano yung Y alam nyo kung ano yung V ito uh, ano din siya I am guilty of this hindi, minsan hindi ko alam kung anong G anong H ginaskip ko siya so at least when you read your books in third year in fourth year in your board exam in med school so maraming ganito in med school you know what are the shortcuts for the amino acids okay so hindi ka maano hindi ka malito when you when you read your books, okay? So again, memorize this ha. If possible, memorize. Pero kung hindi kaya, uh, ano lang, familiarize. So I will not ask you yung mga grabe ka confusing na mga questions about this. So basta memorize or familiarize nyo lang ito, okay? Pero wag kayo mag-familiarize din pag abot sa exam. Hello, familiar. So di din yan pwede ha. Familiarize pero... Take into heart nyo din kung ano yung gifamiliarize ninyo. Okay? Sige. So again, for example, alanin, ALA ang kanya or ala ang kanyang three letter na shortcut and kanyang one letter na shortcut is A. Okay? Kasi sometimes kasi, kunyari sa mga chains ng amino acids kay A, N, D, C, yun yan lang ang ginalagay nila. So at least, you know uh, what are the shortcuts of the amino acids. Okay? So, Okay, so let's focus on uh, some uncommon amino acids. So, yung hindi kasama doon sa 20 amino acids. So, there is actually what we call, or what we, uh, uh, yes, what we call hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. Okay, so wait, I move ko yung aking camera. So, uh, as you can see, there is hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. So, why is it important for us to know hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine? So, actually, hydroxyproline comes from proline. Diba? Proline is an amino acid na common. With the action of hydroxylase, it adds a hydroxyl group to the proline. So, diba? Itong CH2 dito niya na end, na adan siya ng hydroxyl group or yung alcohol group natin. So, with hydroxylase, it becomes hydroxyproline. The same with lysine. So, lysine with the action of hydroxylase will become hydroxylysine. So, okay, hydroxyproline, hydroxylysine, it adds, it was, uh, uh, it was modified by hydroxylase from proline and lysine. So, ano ngayon? Why do we study hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine? So, actually, Hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine are amino acids that are present in collagen. Okay? So, I know you know what collagen is. Diba? Collagen can be found in our skin. Collagen can be found actually in every, virtually every organ in our body. Pero ang ating uh, misconception is sa skin siya. Kasi diba, yung mga collagen tablets, yung mga ganyan... Actually, uh, I don't know if those are uh, those are really effective. Pero uh, collagen is uh, made from our body, then incorporated. Uh, I mean, uh, the hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine are made in our body and are incorporated in collagen. Okay, so important ang hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine sa ating body to make collagen. Kasi. Uh, Sila yung, uh, together with, di ba, tingnan nyo yung sa left, that is the collagen, uh, ano, helix, collagen helix. So, ang mga present dyan na amino acids, usually, 
hydroxyproline, proline, and glycine. So, so when you see hydroxyproline, it is actually an amino acid. Pero, uh, ano lang siya, modified lang siya from proline. Okay? By hydroxylase. So, ano ha, when you see hydroxyproline, hydroxylysine, so you think of collagen. Okay? So, uh, mali. Sige. Next. So, ito, uh, very important sa atin medical technologists. So, when you hear T4, T3, RT3, so you immediately think of the thyroid gland, di ba? Kasi they are thyroid hormones, okay? They are thyroid hormones. So, T4, T3, and RT3 are actually modified amino acids, okay? Amino acids din yan sila. So, they are derived from tyrosine, okay? So, tyrosine. Ano ha? Take note nyo, tyrosine. So, di ba, tyrosine is a common amino acid. Same siya, sama siya doon sa 20 amino acids natin, yung tyrosine. So, tyrosine is actually taken up into the thyroid gland. So, yung thyroid gland natin, nandito yan siya sa neck. So, look at the picture on the left. So, nandito yan siya sa neck ating thyroid gland. So, tyrosine is taken up by the thyroid gland to make our thyroid hormones. So, itong T4, thyroxine, T3, triiodothyronine, and RT3, or reverse na triiodothyronine, they are actually amino acids. Okay? So, di ba you can see the importance of amino acids? So, ano yung importance sa ating thyroid hormones? So, actually, thyroid hormones are used in the metabolism of our body. So, siya yung naga uh, siya yung naga keep sa atin kunyari, uh, yung uh, pag-produce ng heat ng body, pag-metabolize ng ating kinakain, when we uh, regulate our temperature, when we also regulate our energy consumption during rest, ganyan. So, di ba, when there is actually uh, yung pag may ano ka, may thyroid problems ka, so you have goiter, di ba? Yan yung sinasabi nila na goiter. Yan yung lalaki yung dito mo. So, actually, that is also, uh, itong yung mga thyroxine, T3 and T4, so they can be Sometimes they can be increased or they can be uh, abundant in goiter or sometimes they can be decreased. So the, uh, we, you will actually talk more about that in your clinical chemistry. So ano lang, it is sufficient to know in your level na T4, T3, and RT3 are actually derived from tyrosine in the thyroid gland. Okay? So yung tyrosine, gina-incorporatan siya ng iodine. So, yan yung makikita nyo na I dyan. Iodine yan sila. Kaya siya T4 kasi apat na iodine. ba? Diba? T4, thyroxine, apat na iodine ang gi-incorporate sa tyrosine. And then sa T3, three na iodines ang gi-incorporate sa uh, tyrosine. Okay? So, uh, when there is actually iodine deficiency, so kaya nga naga iodized salt tayo kasi when there is iodine deficiency so there will be deficiency of your thyroid hormones okay kasi wala walang ma-incorporate sa tyrosine ang thyroid gland na iodine so when there is uh when there is deficiency of your thyroid hormones so there is actually goiter so there will be goiter so makita mo sometimes na ang mga babae, usually kasi mga babae ang may goiter. So, ma-enlarge ang kanilang neck. So, maisip mo, there there might be something wrong sa pag-produce niya ng thyroid hormones or pwede siya iodine deficient or there are actually other disease entities pa that will uh, present with goiter. Okay? But, ano ha? From tyrosine ang ating uh, thyroid hormones. Okay? So, we are actually done with our amino acids. So, okay, so we are done with proteins. So, uh, we are done with amino acids rather. So, let's go to peptides. So, uh, what are peptides? So, actually, peptides are chains of amino acids okay so they are short chains of amino acids so peptides are uh, from two amino acids 
until mga dozens of amino acids. Okay? So, that's, that are what you call peptides. Okay, so, for example, uh, alanine, glycine, yan, yan, may, may, ano siya, may change of amino acids. So, that is what you call a peptide. Okay? So, how are peptides formed? Okay, so look at this, uh, look at this uh, illustration. So, a peptide is formed or a peptide bond, peptide bond is formed between two amino acids. Okay, so look at the two amino acids at the top. So, ito yung first amino acid, siya yung may pink na box and then yung second amino acid is my blue na box. Okay, so why are those box painted pink and blue? So, the peptide bond is actually formed from the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the amino group of another am amino acid. Okay? So, carboxyl group of the first amino acid plus the amino group of the second amino acid mag-form sila ng bond with, with each other. Okay? With each other. And then water will go out of the process. Okay? So, tatanggalin niya yung water. So, diba? Tatanggalin niya yung water. And then, there will be the formation of the peptide bond between the two amino acids. And then, the resulting bond or the resulting uh, structure is a peptide. Okay? It is a peptide. So, again, the carboxyl group of one amino acid and then the amino group of one amino acid will form a bond with each other, uh, eliminating water in the process, and then forming a peptide bond. So, yung peptide bond natin, yan yung yellow na bond. Okay? So, di ba? Yung dalawang amino acids natin, they are now connected to each other. Then, uh, this is what we call a peptide. So, there is the amino or N terminal end. So, look at the left portion. So, di ba, may amino group kasi tayo na hindi na 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 bond with the other car, uh, with the other uh, amino acid, di ba? Then, yung sa kabila, may carboxyl end pa siya na hindi din na bond. So, the amino end is the NH3 or N terminal end. So, kung ano yung may N dyan, yan yung amino end. Okay. Then, yung C terminal end, kung ano yung may COO, yan yung carboxyl end niya. Okay? So, I hope you understood. Okay? Carboxyl group plus amino... Carboxyl group of one amino acid plus amino group of another amino acid will form a peptide bond releasing what? Uh, water in the process. Okay? So, actually, ano siya? It is a dehydration process kasi tatanggalin niya yung water. And then, it will form a bond between the two amino acids forming a peptide. Peptide bond or uh, the other name for a peptide bond is an amide bond. Okay? A-M-I-D-E. Amide bond. Okay? So, the end terminal end. So, yung hindi na, na, uh, hindi na, na, uh, na, na compound or hindi na form ng bond with another amino acid yung free na N terminal end is the amino end and yung C terminal end is the carboxyl end okay so ito siya this is what we call a peptide chain so di ba meron siyang N terminal end yung NH3 so hindi siya na form ng bond with another amino acid and then sa last part there is a COO or the carboxyl end or C terminal end okay so, this is the peptide chain. So, ba? As I have said earlier, gly, I-L-E, val, ganyan lang nilalagay nila sometimes. So, it is better for you or it is better for us to memorize what are the shorthand notations of each amino acid. So, ito siya, gly, I-L-E, val, cis. So, they are actually amino acids that uh, have formed uh, peptide bonds with, with each other. So, this is what you call the peptide chain. And then the N terminal end and the C terminal end. So, what is the direction of the peptide chain? So, the direction is actually from the N terminal end to the, to the C terminal end, from the amino terminal end to the carboxyl terminal end. So, ang first part nito is yung NH3. So, the first amino acid is glycine. Okay? The first amino acid is glycine. And the last amino acid is asparagine.
Okay? Maka mag as ako niyan. Next. So, what are some biological functions of small peptides? So, diba, as you can see, oxytocin and vasopressin, they are actually small peptides. So, ano lang yan sila? Nine lang yan sila na amino acids. Nine lang yan sila na amino acids. Pero they are very important in our body. So, why? So, actually, oxytocin and vasopressin. So, ano nyo lang ha? I, uh, basta memorize nyo na vasopressin and oxytocin are small peptides, okay? In our body. So, they are actually formed in the hypothalamus, okay? They are formed in the hypothalamus and they are released in the posterior pituitary gland, okay? So, they are made in the hypothalamus and they are released in the posterior pituitary gland. So, it is actually um, a misconception that they are made in the posterior pituitary gland. They are made in the hypothalamus. So, I think you already know this na hypothalamus yan sila galing. So, what does ADH or vasopressin, vasopressin's other name is ADH or antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin do? So, oxytocin actually acts on, usually, the pregnant woman, okay? Kasi, oxytocin will uh, induce contractions of the uterus during labor. So, di ba, very important siya when you don't have oxytocin in our body, hindi lalabas ang baby from the mother. So, it is actually very important during labor that there is oxytocin, di ba? Ilang amino acids, nine amino acids lang siya, pero ganyan ka-essential ang kanyang uh, uh, ganyan ka-essential ang kanyang ano, uh, role in our body. And then, it also acts on the breast of the mother so that it can express milk. Okay? So, it is also used in lactation. So, again, uh, contraction of the uterus. Uterus, di ba? That is the part kung where the baby is situated, di ba? Sa uterus. And it also acts on the breast to express milk. So, it is not uh, it does not make milk or it does not uh, uh, act on the breast to make milk kasi prolactin yung nagasabi naga sa breast na mag-make ng milk. Pero oxytocin acts on the breast to express the milk. So, para lalabas yung milk na ginawa ng breast. Okay? What about vasopressin? So, same sila in the posterior pituitary gland sila lalabas. Pero what is the role of vasopressin? Actually, its role is in the urine natin or sa ating kidneys. So, its name is antidiuretic hormone. So, from the words antidiuretic, anti and diuretic, diuretic, diuresis, diuresis means uh, means mag-ihi. Okay? Mag-ihi. So, anti. So, hindi ka iihi. Okay? So, yan ang role ng ating antidiuretic hormone. It stops us from secreting a lot of uh, mga solutes, water in our urine. Okay? So, there is actually water retention. So, bakit natin need ng water retention? So, it is actually used in, ano, in times of dehydration. So, kapag wala ka masyadong water na intake, so, bakit mo iihi ang water, di ba? You need water in your body. So, the body secretes vasopressin or ADH to signal the kidney to retain the water. Okay? So, again, oxytocin and ADH. So, let's go to the structures of proteins. So, we are down to our last part of the lecture. So, ito na, structures of proteins na tayo. Doon na tayo sa uh, higher order of structures na. So, there are actually four structures of proteins. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So, let's go through them one by one. So, these are the four structures Primary structure, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So, I will only discuss the basic dito kasi there are a lot of concepts na mga super, super secondary, mga ganyan na. So, di na natin yan siya need uh, memorize or sandihan. So, you should know the basics of the types of protein structures. So, first, what is a primary structure? So, ito na yung pinakita ko sa inyo yung peptide kanina. So, this is actually only the amino acid sequence. So, ganyan lang siya. Sequence lang siya ng amino acids. Glycine, 
asparagine, phenylalanine, so ganyan lang siya. Yun yung kanyang primary structure. It is actually, peptide lang siya, mga peptide bonds lang siya, pero longer. Kasi ba diba, peptides only, ano lang siya, a small amount of amino acids lang siya. Pero pag proteins na, uh, amino acids, a long chain of amino acids can reach up to thousands, ilang hundred thousands of amino acids. Okay? So, yan lang siya, ang primary structure niya. So, why should we know the primary structure of amino acids or proteins? So, there is actually uh, what we call sickle cell anemia. So, sickle cell anemia uh, from the normal red blood cell, diba? the normal red blood cell is shaped as biconcave. So, look at the picture, biconcave siya. So, there are actually two concavities. Biconcave siya so that it can uh, fit through the capillaries. So, yung capillaries natin, yun yung mga maliliit, masyado natin ang mga blood vessels na isang red blood cell lang talaga ang pwede makapass through. So, for example, dito sa ating mga end capillaries, dito sa ating kamay, so, maliit yan masyado ang ating mga blood vessels dyan and only one red blood cell can pass through it or pass through them. So, its shape is actually uh, made as biconcave so that it can para makaano siya ba, flexible enough siya para ma-fold niya ang sarili niya so that it can pass through the capillaries and it will not cause obstruction. Okay? So, I hope you get it. So, actually, the amino acid sequence, so look at the primary primary structure. Primary structure ito ha kasi it is a chain of amino acids. So, look at the primary structure of a normal RBC, normal hemoglobin of an RBC. So, hemoglobin ang ating pinag-uusapan ha. ba diba? Hemoglobin is a protein found in red blood cells, ba diba? So, valine, histidine, leucine, threonine, proline, then glutamic acid ang sixth amino acid. Okay? Glutamic acid ang sixth amino acid. Sometimes, there might be mutations. Okay? Mutations na ang glutamic acid will be replaced by valine okay so there will be disorder uh, there will be a disorder in the uh, sequencing of amino acids na imbis glutamic acid ang kanyang sixth amino acid it will become valine and what will this entail so kapag ang glutamic acid will become valine so the sixth amino acid will become valine the shape of the red blood cells will become sickles so sickles para siyang yung moon shaped siya ba na 'di ba yung sickle yung ginagamit sa farming yung sickle ba sa search niyo yung sickle na na ginagamit sa farming so the the red blood cell na biconcave dapat will become sickle okay so kapag sickle siya so ano mangyayari it will cause obstruction sa ating small blood vessels okay it will become uh an obstruction kasi hindi niya naman kaya i eh, uh, fold ang kanyang self. So, hindi na siya flexible enough. Okay? So, yan ang ating dilemma when there is sickle cell anemia. Okay? So, at least alam ninyo. Okay. So, next, let's go to the secondary structure. So, secondary structure, it is actually a hydrogen bonded arrangement of the backbone of the protein or the polypeptide chain. So, yung primary structures natin, they will have hydrogen bonds. Okay? They will have hydrogen bonds. So, look at the secondary structures. Wait lang ha. Look at the secondary structures. So, there are actually two types of secondary structures. Alpha helix and beta pleated sheet. Okay? So, sa alpha helix, para siyang, uh, para siyang swirl, pa ganyan, ano siya, uh, para siyang, uh, Diba, yung helix, yung DNA, para siyang DNA na ganyan siya, nag siya within itself. Okay? So, yan yung sinasabi natin na alpha helix. Pero yung beta pleated sheet, para siyang zigzag. Diba, look at the, the structure, para siyang zigzag. Okay? So, actually, it suffices to know what is beta pleated sheet and alpha helix. So, you can see na ang sa alpha helix, diba, Ang alpha helix natin is, for example, yung nandyan sa picture, papunta siya sa taas, ba? Papunta siya sa taas. So, it's hydrogen bond. So, look at yung mga may dotted na hydrogen 
'di ba may parang may mga dots diyan yung diyan sa baba oxygen to hydrogen may mga dots so its hydrogen bond is actually parallel parallel siya so kung papunta sa taas ang ating uh, alpha helix papunta din sa taas ang ating hydrogen bond parallel siya pero sa beta pleated sheet 'di ba pag ganyan ang ating sheet 'di ba pag ganyan ang sheet pero as you can see the hydrogen bonds are perpendicular. So, di ba, ang hydrogen to oxygen dyan sa pinaka-first na bond, perpendicular siya to the sheet. Okay? Yan ang difference nila. Beta pleated sheets are have perpendicular hydrogen bonds while alpha helixes have parallel uh, bonds. Okay? Hydrogen bonds. And alpha helix is actually more commonly found in proteins than beta pleated sheets. Okay? So, this is an example of a collagen triple helix, okay? So, alpha helix yan sila, yung collagen. Di ba, as I have said earlier, hydroxyproline, proline, glycine. So, they are actually alpha helixes, okay? Na nag, uh, nag ano sila with each other, nag coil sila with each other. Tatlong helix, tatlong alpha helix na nag coil with each other, okay? So, that's why it is important to know structures of proteins. So, there are actually two types of protein conformations. So, the first one is a fibrous protein. And then, the second second one is a globular protein. So, the fibrous protein, they are long and narrow. Then, they are for structural st structural purposes. So, for example, collagen. Diba? Nakita nyo kanina, paganyan siya. Diretso siya. Line siya. So, collagen is actually a fibrous protein. Okay. So, they are for structural na mga ano sa mga muscles, skin. So, uh, they function sa ating structure. Then, they have repetitive amino, sequ amino acid sequences. And then, examples, collagen, myosin in our uh, muscle, fibrin, muscle pa rin, actin, keratin, elastin. And they are insoluble in water. Okay? So, when you put collagen in water, they are actually insoluble. And then, globular proteins are round, spherical, functional, and they have irregular amino acid sequences. And examples are enzymes. Hemoglobin is a globular protein. Insulin used sa ating uh, glucose homeostasis. You will learn more about that. And they are soluble in water. Okay? Basta, know lang the difference between fibrous and globular proteins. So, let's go to the tertiary structure. So, the tertiary structure is only just a three-dimensional arrangement of the atoms. So, mga alpha helixes, mga beta pleated sheets lang pa rin yan sila na sunod-sunod na nag-fold within each other. Okay? Kaya siya nagkaroon ng three-dimensional arrangement. Okay? So, yan lang yung tertiary structure actually. Secondary structure lang yan siya na continuous na. Kanyari, mga alpha helixes, then beta pleated sheets na mag-form lang sila ng 3D arrangement. Okay? And the tertiary structure can be determined by X-ray crystallography. So, it suffices to know na yan. Okay. So, an example is myoglobin. So, myoglobin is a tertiary structure. Actually, it is a tertiary structure. So, it is made up of eight alpha helical regions. Okay? And no beta pleated sheets. Diba? Look at myoglobin. So, mga alpha helix lang yan sila na sunod-sunod. Then, nagfold lang sila within each other. Okay? So, what is myoglobin? From the term myo, it means it is found in the muscles. Okay? Muscles, skeletal muscles, heart muscles, cardiac muscles, smooth muscles. They are found in... Uh, usually, striated muscles, uh, skeletal muscles, and sa cardiac muscles. So, it actually um, purposes as, uh, its purpose is actually oxygen, transport, and storage in our muscles. So, it actually makes our muscles red. Okay? So, kaya siya red kasi may myoglobin siya. So, it purposes as, uh, oxygen transport and storage in our muscles. So kapag konti lang ang myoglobin mo, so there will be easy fatigue of our muscles. Okay? So next is 
the last structure is quaternary structure. So it is actually the final level and it is uh, made up of more than one polypeptide chain. So actually, mga tertiary structures lang din yan sila na nag uh, mix with each other. So there are dimers, trimers, and tetramers. So dimers, dalawang polypeptide chain, trimers, and tatlo then tetramer. So actually, hindi lang siya isang polypeptide chain kasi di ba ang primary, secondary, and tertiary natin, isang chain lang yan sila lahat na nag-fold-fold lang within each other. Pero ang quaternary structure natin made up of more than one polypeptide chain. Okay? So, ito, hemoglobin, it is actually made up of four polypeptide chains. So, there are two alpha chains, A1, alpha 1, alpha 2, and two beta chains, beta 1 and beta 2. Okay? So, two alpha and two beta chains. And there is also the heme between the globin chains. Okay? So, yung globin chains natin, yan yung ating polypeptide chains. Alpha 1, alpha 2, globins, yun yung ating proteins. Okay? Beta 1, beta 2 globins, yun yung ating polypeptide chain. Then, there is the heme group which attaches to the oxygen na needed by our body. So, ito siya. ba? There are two alpha chains, two beta chains, and then there is a heme group sa ating uh, alpha and beta chains. Okay? So, ang heme group, yan yung nag-attach sa oxygen. Kasi, di ba, the function of hemoglobin is to transport oxygen in the red blood cells. Okay? So, from the lungs, from the lungs, uh, from the heart, then to the lungs, then to the other parts of our body, it will transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. Di ba? So, the heme group actually is the one responsible for that. Pero meron tayong four globin chains or four polypeptide chains. So actually, yung sickle cell anemia, it is a uh, it is a it is a defect in the beta chain. Okay? Remember nyo ha, beta chain of hemoglobin, beta chain, ikailan nga na amino acid, the sixth amino acid where glutamic acid is replaced by valine. Okay? So that's why, ba? imagine nyo itong beta chain na ito, mag-iba ang kanyang conformation. So there will be a difference in the structure of the uh, red blood cell. So as you can see, pag mag-sickling na good siya, pag mag na siya, usually sa mga low oxygen tension na parts of our body dito sa, dito sa hands, sa fingers, sa ear, sa toes. So there will be occlusion, okay? So, okay. So, those are the four structures. So, primary structure is the chain of amino acids. Secondary structure, alpha helix or beta pleated sheet. Then, tertiary structure, mag 3D conformation lang yung ating secondary structure. And then, quaternary structure is two or more polypeptide chains. O, ba Aggregation of two or more polypeptides. So, I hope that you learned a lot during this lesson. And then, you will... Um, perfect my quiz exams and then do well on all of your subjects and study well so that your future self will thank you yourself na you studied well in second year and third year when it comes to your board exams and your med school so good luck everyone thank you for listening and stay safe and healthy